Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. In the waters of baptism, we have passed over from death to life with Jesus Christ. We are a new creation. For this saving mystery and for this water, let us bless God, who was, who is, and who is to come. We thank you, O God, for your river of life flowing freely from your throne, through the earth, through the city, through every living thing. You rescued Noah and his family from the flood. You opened wide the sea for the Israelites. Now in these waters, you flood us with your mercy and our sin is drowned forever. You open the gate of righteousness and we pass through safely. In Jesus Christ, you calm and trouble the waters. You nourish us and enclose us in safety. You call us forth and send us out. In lush and barren places, you are with us. You have become our salvation. Now breathe upon this water and awaken your church once more. Claim us again as your beloved and holy people. Quench our thirst, cleanse our hearts, wipe away every tear. To you our beginning and our end, our shepherd and lamb, to you be honor, glory, praise, and thanksgiving now and forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the community of the Holy Spirit be with you always, and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, creator of the universe, we praise you. We thank you for your unending love, for the gift of life and eternal life through Jesus. By the grace of Christ among us, enable us to show the power of the resurrection and forgiveness. Come, Holy Spirit. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 20th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Judeans, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? 
Blessed are those who have not seen and yet come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe in Jesus the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. It's our first Sunday of the Easter season, which lasts 50 days. We were in Lent for 40 days, and we have to be in Easter for at least 10 days more. During Lent, we were especially focused on repentance and turning back to God, especially focusing on the ways that God makes a way in the wilderness. We were turning away from the ways of the world, away from individual and collective sin, and back towards God's grace. In the cross, All our sin is put to death, and in Christ's resurrection, we are forgiven and made new. So, in our Easter celebration, we are invited to participate in God's forgiveness through the gift of the Holy Spirit. Our scripture for today invites us to reflect upon how God forgives us and how we forgive. Our gospel text encourages forgiveness that is not necessarily simple, but a journey. A journey that you do not have to walk alone because the Holy Spirit will be your constant companion. The story starts with Jesus appearing to his disciples who are in hiding. In John's gospel, after Jesus was crucified, the disciples fled and Even though earlier in the narrative, Mary Magdalene came to them and told them that she had seen Jesus alive and transformed, they were still afraid, and they were hiding in a locked room. Suddenly, Jesus appears to them. Can you imagine their shock and surprise? I bet they were absolutely terrified. Could this really be Jesus? Could he really have been raised from the dead? Jesus greets them with peace and then shows them the wounds in his hands so that, and his side, during, which he received during the crucifixion, so that they can trust that it really is him. The disciples rejoice that it really is Jesus. What a happy ending to their discipleship journey together. However, this story is not yet over. Instead, it has a whole new beginning. Jesus proclaims that they are now to start something new. They are now sent out with a new way of living together. He commissions them saying, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. Then he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Jesus propels his disciples onto a journey. He proclaims that they will be sent into the world with the Holy Spirit and the ability to forgive. Forgiveness is now a journey that is done in community with the Holy Spirit. Jesus breathes the Holy Spirit first and foremost. Jesus is actually only able to give out this Holy Spirit because he has died and rose again. He received the Holy Spirit, and those who worship God no longer have to atone for their sins through animal sacrifice or strict rituals of penance. Because Jesus made the ultimate sacrifice once and for all. Through Jesus' death on the cross, all sin and death is canceled out. Through his resurrection and the passing along the Spirit, his disciples participate in forgiveness as well. Because of God's forgiveness, passed on through the Holy Spirit, 
the disciples are now able to forgive. We need a continuous reminder of God's forgiveness to help us forgive others. That's why in our worship, we often start out with a confession and absolution. And this confession leads us to the promise of forgiveness. We are declared your sins are forgiven. We don't, they don't need to hold you back from your own peace of mind or your relationship with God. In our Easter celebration, it is easy to hear the good news that our sins are forgiven by God. It is perhaps a little bit more tricky to figure out how we are to forgive and share that forgiveness with others. When someone really hurts you or betrays you, it is tough to know what forgiveness means or how to do it. The simple mantra of forgive and forget might seem too simple. It might seem dismissive of the suffering that you endured. It's important to recognize that we don't have to forget, figure out how to forgive on our own. Just like the first disciples, we have the Holy Spirit with us too. In our baptism, the Holy Spirit fills us with grace and forgiveness. It is the very breath that we breathe. The Holy Spirit is the calming breath that can ground us. When someone is in distress, we often encourage them to breathe. Maybe like if you think of if you have a kiddo who falls off a bike and they're they're distraught and they and they're teary and they can't even breathe through their tears, you might tell them to to it's okay. Take some deep breaths. It's okay. Breathing can help us calm down and feel more present, especially when others may not know that you're experiencing distress. When I was working with a therapist around some trauma that I had experienced as a, tra- as a child, um, and I was beginning my own path to forgiveness, we would practice breathing techniques. I still use them, actually, um, if, I, if something brings up something within me or, or I'm triggered, but it reminds me that um, breathing helps me get more grounded if I feel um, all of a sudden afraid because of a memory or something like that. Journeying towards forgiveness around this event has taken a long time. I wouldn't be walking the path without the support of the Holy Spirit, and I am reminded of God's presence with me when I pay attention to my breathing. So when we think about forgiving those who have committed sins against us, it is good news that it is not all up to us. Forgiveness comes from God through the Holy Spirit. Sometimes when we teach forgiveness, we might turn it into something that's just too simple. The person who made a mistake apologizes, and then I say, I forgive you, and it's all over. But it doesn't always work like that. Sometimes people who are victimized never get an apology. So forgiveness isn't necessarily telling the person that hurt you, I forgive you. It's not necessarily about your personal absolution of their sin. Through the Holy Spirit, God does the forgiving. Even Jesus needed to call upon God to bestow forgiveness when he was going through his crucifixion. In the Gospel of Luke, when Jesus is being crucified, he prays, Father, forgive them, for they know not know, for they do not know what they are doing. In the book Wound, Wounds That Heal, Joni Sinkin, a person who survived a sexual assault, pointed out that Jesus didn't say, I forgive you. Instead, he called out to God and asked God to bestow that forgiveness upon those who were torturing him. Forgiveness comes from God. It's not only up to you. This has certainly been good news for me. 
another point about forgiveness that has been especially freeing for me is that forgiveness is about the freedom of the forgiver, not the person who who did the wrongdoing. In our text, Jesus encourages forgiveness as a means of liberation. After giving the Holy Spirit to the disciples, he says to them, If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. In Greek, the word forgive can also be translated as free. Jesus is saying that forgiving sin is freedom. Retaining sins will hold you back. And he doesn't actually specify if this freedom is for the person who has been wronged or the person who committed the sin. So it's for both. It's not that the disciples have some final judgment over all people's sin or salvation. Instead, Jesus is expressing that the Holy Spirit helps us let go of sin and not be retained or held back by it. For a person who has been wounded or hurt by no fault of their own, this forgiveness, this freedom, is journeying to a place where the pain and guilt or shame of what happened no longer has a firm grip on them. This can be a difficult journey, especially for traumatic experiences. But allow me to share a less complex example so we can kind of get the idea. When I was in high school, I played volleyball. I had a coach that especially cared for the favorite player, her favorite players on the team, um, and she enjoyed uh, especially coaching them and giving them all the glory. And of course, I know that you play to win, but this coach played favorites in a way that was maybe uh, more than expected. She didn't really care about developing um, the underclassmen or coaching up those who maybe weren't as naturally skilled. It actually got to the point that I had played volleyball ever since I was like 11 years old, but my senior year of high school, I did not join the team. I was so beaten down by the experience and the coach that I refused to play volleyball for years. I wouldn't even play it at like a backyard graduation party or something. I had declared that I hated volleyball and I hated that coach that took away my favorite sport. Eventually, though, I began a forgiveness journey. I actually did start playing volleyball again, and I do enjoy it again. I no longer let that coach have power over me and hold me back from a game that gave me so much joy. I actually, you know, never went up to the coach and said, I forgive you for being such a jerk. (laughs) No, I never, I never actually said, you know, I didn't have to say, I forgive you. But I did eventually come to a place of freedom, a place of forgiveness. Now this place of freedom in forgiveness is not the same as forgetting. The saying forgive and forget doesn't always work for some folks. Often we carry the scars and the wounds with us throughout life, just like how Jesus bared his scars to his disciples. He didn't appear unscathed, and he didn't tell them to forget about everything that they had gone through during Holy Week. Instead, Jesus invited Thomas to touch his scars so that he could trust that it really was Jesus. Thomas needed to know that the man in front of him was his friend and his teacher and that they had shared that painful experience of Holy Week. He knew he could not just simply forget what had happened. Jesus' death and resurrection radically shifted Thomas's life. He no longer had to fear death. And now with the Holy Spirit, all of the disciples could participate in God's forgiveness in new ways. That was all a part of their story and they're taking it in to their new journey. We participate in forgiveness journeys too. 
maybe this whole sermon has been a bit much for you, or it's really re uh, framing how you think about forgiveness. Um, but wherever you are, we are on a forgiveness journey. And if you ever want to talk more about where you're at, I'd love to walk with you and journey with you. Because we don't walk alone. The Holy Spirit is with us and passes God's forgiveness on to us so that we can pass it on too. If you need a reminder that the Holy Spirit is with you, just take a moment to notice your breath. In your breathing in, is God's love and grace for you. Forgiveness is for the freedom of the forgiver. It's a process. But perhaps eventually the sins that hurt you will no longer hurt, hold you back, but you will feel more free. And finally, forgiveness is not forgetting. Even in the process of healing, scars will still leave a mark. Easter is a time to celebrate and contemplate God's forgiveness. I hope that wherever you are on your forgiveness journey, you feel the Holy Spirit offering a little freedom and a whole lot of love. Amen. Let us pray. Set free from captivity to sin and death, we pray to the God of resurrection, for the church, for people in need, and for all of creation. Holy One, equip your church as witnesses of your goodness to go and tell others of your abundant love. Grant us desire to follow. Give us faith to trust Jesus who is our salvation and life. God, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Renew, renew us, O oh God, renew your people's commitment to use resources responsibly and to live well amidst creation. Invite us to recognize and nurture signs of resurrection life in the natural world. God, in your mercy, receive our prayer. 
Oh God, guide all who are in positions of power and authority. Help all humankind to use their gifts and resources for the good of all, that we would work for justice and peace throughout each and every land. God, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Uphold your children who cry out to you, O God. Wherever people are overcome by the fear of death, breathe into them your life, love, peace, and hope. God, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Give us the words of your saints who, like Thomas, boldly confessed your Son as Lord and God. With Jesus, our leader, empower us to live in accordance with Jesus' ways. God, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Oh God, we pray, pray for the places and spaces where there is fighting, where there is war and abuse, violence and suffering. Oh God, turn hearts to you that there would be peace in each and every land. Raise up people around those who are suffering to extend care. Help us to do what we can, oh God. Give us courage and wisdom to pray, to advocate, to give as we are able, to serve as we are able. Come, Holy Spirit. God, in your mercy, receive our prayer. In your mercy, O oh God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Praise to you for creating the heavens and the earth. Praise to you for bringing liberation to your people. Praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one. Praise to you for the death and resurrection of Christ. Praise to you for your spirit poured out over all nations. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. This is the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. Precious blood. 
was so lost, I should have died. But you have brought me to your side, to be led by your staff and rod, and to be called a The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, generous God, for in this bread and cup, we have tasted the new heaven and earth, where hunger and thirst are no more. Send us from this table as witness to the resurrection that through our lives all may know life in Jesus' name. Amen. God, the creator of life, Christ the living redeemer, and the life-giving spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace. Tell what God has done. Thanks be to God. Mm -hmm.